This is a protest against mob lynching which has not been organized by any political party or any one organization. It's a spontaneous coming together of citizens in India, not only in Mumbai and Delhi but in various parts of India to say stop mob lynching. It cannot happen in my name. Whether it is happening in Srinagar with that police officer or whether it is happening with a young boy on his way to celebrate Eid or the many instances is where even love jihad is being practiced. It is against the constitution and the impunity with which it is happening. We have to say enough is enough. People's movements, if people increase this, if this is not just a one-off, but you can see it happening. After all, in Nirbhaya's case, we did make a change. We need to have that same, same kind of intensity in saying, and I can see it by the way people have gathered spite of their aim and in spite of their circumstances and no, nobody knowing it. I have them. It is not a question of saying barge in their ideology. At the moment we are dealing simply with law and order. We are saying law and order has to be established. Forget about everything else. That is a later thing. At the moment no government can say that no, it is beyond them to make sure that the rule of law is false. I am here because I don't want to be next in life. <laughs> Self-preservation. Self-preservation is one of the biggest uh, motivators because the way things are going, we don't know who they'll come for next. And so, uh, I think if we want to save our nation, we've got to be here. I don't care uh, what I achieve as long as I do what I feel I should do. Well, I think everybody who feels uh, similarly should uh, have the courage to uh, stand up for it because this is a time that uh, if we don't stand up, when we will, when will we? So I think, uh, and we must uh, have faith in the collective results of our actions. Well, how is humanity to survive if uh, lynching becomes the norm? If you're going to be killed for your opinion, if you're going to be killed for your clothes, if you're going to be killed for what you eat, uh, how, are, how is humanity to survive? And I think uh, it's the bigger question of the survival of uh, humanity that should uh, cause concern to all of us. It's a message to the governments, centers and states that mob terror is no less vicious or dangerous than bomb terror. What we are seeing in the country is a deterioration into a lynch republic 
We cannot afford this slide away from constitutional values. Every citizen of India, regardless of his religion, her religion, caste or identity, has a right to live here, right to eat what he or she wants, and right to a place under the sun within India. The governments at the centre and the state have been extremely lax in allowing the mobs to take over the streets. It's about time that Indians assert that this country is based on the constitution that affords equal citizenship and equal rights to all. It is quite spectacular that way, without an umbrella organization, without any organizing body, citizens by themselves have come ahead in such huge numbers today. Do you see this as a beginning? It's a beginning which can only get better and more uh, emphatic and more powerful. I think for a long time people have been feeling extremely upset and frustrated by this but you just needed that one incident or those five incidents because it was not just Junaid outside Delhi but it was Mohammed Salman in Jharkhand also after Alvida Namaz who was killed, shot dead by three policemen and their incidents happen every day and somehow that numbness and the silence had to be broken. The silence has been broken today across 12 cities and it will only get more powerful. The protests will only get more powerful and more creative. So what is, that, what is it that you expect from the government now after these protests are being held at various places across the country? You know, skill in India, make in India, now it's lynching in India. We expect the government to speak, to speak unequivocally that the mob will not be tolerated. We need the Home Minister of the states and the centre to say that the policeman is supposed to function by the constitution. The Thana Pravari, the district magistrate is not supposed to function according to some Sangh ideology but because of the constitution. And it's both on the constitution that this government rests, whether it's the district collector, whether it's the inspector in charge, or whether it's the prime minister of India. So we expect the message to be abide by the law and enforce the rule of law. Tushar, what's your message for this government? Act. There's enough of speaking, enough of rhetoric. The time has come when we need to see action being taken against these fanatics who are hijacking uh, the country. But then, uh, it's like asking uh, the left hand to slap the right cheek. That's the dilemma that we are facing because we, if we ask the government to act, whom will they act against? Their own parent organization? But we have to force that. We have to force that. Too. As a descendant of Mahatma Gandhi, do you think that the current government is upholding the values that Mahatma Gandhi Well, like all governments, they don't miss an opportunity to garland Bapu statues, but that's not enough. That's not enough. Uh, they have to abide and live by the basic principles of uh, peace, non-violence and personal freedom. Otherwise, like everything else, it's hypocrisy. Why do you think the people of uh, like country are getting so aggressive? Uh, well, the people of uh, this country are getting aggressive because one Akhlaq is killed in a beef lynching and the minister of the state goes and grabs him in a tricolor. So what message are you going to send to send to the people that you can go and you are emboldened, you can go and do whatever you want and you have our support. So the mob is emboldened and they are doing what they have to. So this is not only the Muslim thing, even in the Kashmir, when superintendent has been killed, a Hindu. But, but what, what, I mean, I do not understand this comparison. This is against mob lynching of all types. It does. It's, I'm not saying it's about a particular community. It's about everybody. So I don't understand why do we have to say, that, oh, well, that had happened in Kashmir also. It happened in Kashmir, yes, and we are protesting against this culture of mob lynching. Our heart bleeds for Ayub as much as it bleeds for Junaid. And we do not believe in this culture of lynching. And as humans, I think, we, if, if we have a conscience, then we will be here and protest against this. No, people have to be free to, to behave as they please. The responsible adults have to be free to uh, you know, live life the way they find meaningful for themselves. I don't think the government has any role in, uh, in uh, uh, making rules for uh, people where which do not, uh, which uh, have no basis in society. We need to take positions against the rising intolerance. We, things are not going to get better just, just on their own. Things are getting worse. And unless we are all, uh, all, but we, I think, I still believe that the good people are in a vast majority in this country. And we still, uh, and if, if we can come together, uh, as uh, Shelley said, uh, you are many, they are few. Finally, we are breaking the silence. We are breaking the silence on the streets. We are saying that mob terror is no less vicious or less dangerous than bomb terror. Uh, we, in, over the last three years, we've seen the terrorizing and the lynching of our own people.
be it Muslims, be it Dalits, be it farmers, being it working class. And we are seeing a complete transfer of public resources to private capital and we are also seeing a terrorizing of people in the name of religion and caste. It's a very dangerous state of affairs and we need to really speak out to protect the constitutional base of this country. But give two hours a day, two hours a day wherever you are, at your workplace, in your home, in your corporate society and talk to people, dialogue to people against the hatred and the violence. You have to have mohalla level, street level, Gram Sabha level resistance. We have to tell the Thana Prabari in Jharkhand, we have to tell the Thana PSO in Mumbai, we have to tell the inspector in charge in Delhi that his oath is to the constitution. His oath is not to some hatred and vitriol let out by the Sangh Parivar. I'm here, uh, well, I'm just sick and tired of this uh, lynching. I thought, uh, I mean, of lots of things, but lynching in particular. I thought lynching was something that only happened in the, in the States in you know, early 20s, 30, earlier part of the last century. And to think that it's happening here in my country just just uh, gets my goat, you know. And uh, uh, this politics that's led up to it, that's condoning this, is uh, something that lots of people need to just stand up and, and protest about. And, and, I, and I hope uh, this is the beginning of something because uh, it's just gone on too long, you know. Has gone on without anybody uh, trying to stop it from the ruling dispensation. I mean, my, my feeling: this is the worst government we've ever had, and I, I keep saying that with every government. And this is absolutely the worst because they are doing nothing to stop this. So, I mean, even first of all, I don't see it. I don't see the cleanliness of Swach, Swachh Bharat. I don't see this make in India. To me, it's all a bunch of nonsense. But even if there was that. I don't want that at the cost of people being killed. I, I'd rather have no development. You know? My fellow Indians being killed, that, uh, it's like uh, John Dunn said, you know, uh, you, every man, uh, death is whatever it was, what is the quote, uh, is it part of me dies with every, and uh, that's true, you know, every man, I, every time I open the paper and see this thing happening, a little bit of me is dying. Well, any sensible government would, would crack down immediately, you know, and say that we, and at least issue a proclamation from the highest level saying this will not be tolerated. And uh, I do not condone this. That's a minimum I would expect of any government, of any prime minister. I mean, this is a man who, who tweets about the, the, of course, the tragedy in Portugal where there was that fire, but doesn't care about tweeting about what happened in Ballabgarh or, or Una or, you know, you, I'm even losing track of the names. Fellow doesn't want to tweet about that. Doesn't want to express. So, some remark like that from the top, I think, would go a long way. And unfortunately, we are not seeing that. My only message is: I'm a fez. I'm a fez. A nazm is a bowl. Bowl. I want to hear. Bowl. 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 बोल ये सुतवा जिस्म है तेरा बोल के जान तक तेरी है बोल देख के आहन घर की दुकान में तुंद है शोले सुर्ख है आहन तमाम आवाजें खुलने लगे फूलों के दहाने फैला हर एक जंजीर का दामन बो बोल ये थोड़ा वक्त बहुत है जिस मजब की मौत से पहले बोल के सच जिंदा है अब तक बोल जो कुछ कहना है कहले थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच एक मिनट आई जस्ट पुट दिस गुड अप
लड़े रहे हैं इसलिए कि प्यार जग में जी सके लड़ रहे हैं इसलिए कि प्यार जग में जी सके आदमी का खून कोई आदमी ना पी सके आदमी का खून कोई आदमी ना पी सके हो गई है पीर पर्वत श्री पिघलनी चाहिए हो गई है पीर पर्वत श्री पिघलनी चाहिए इस हिमालय से कोई गंगा निकलनी चाहिए इस हिमालय से कोई गंगा निकलनी चाहिए सिर्फ हंगामा खड़ा करना मेरा मकसद नहीं सिर्फ हंगामा खड़ा करना मेरा मकसद नहीं अपनी कोशिश है कि ये सूरत बदलनी चाहिए अपनी कोशिश है कि ये सूरत बदलनी चाहिए मेरे सीने में नहीं तो तेरे सीने में सही मेरे सीने में नहीं तो तेरे सीने में सही तो कहीं भी कहीं भी आग लेकिन आग जलनी चाहिए वो कहीं भी आग लेकिन आग जलनी चाहिए हाथ लहराते हुए हर लाश जलनी चाहिए हाथ लहराते हुए हर लाश जलनी चाहिए वो हो गई है पीर पर्वत बिगलनी चाहिए हो गई है पीर पर्वत सी बिगलनी चाहिए इस हिमालय से कोई गंगा निकलनी 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 चाहिए लड़ रहे हैं इसलिए कि प्यार जग में जी सके लड़ रहे हैं इसलिए कि प्यार जग में जी सके आदमी का